Okay, we are still taping these shows. As I said last week, I'm going to be going uh, to different conferences, and then I'm going out of the country. I'll be in the Middle East, so we're not able to do the live broadcast yet. So I'll be gone for the next few weeks, and I'm taping these as a backlog that can be used while I'm gone. When I get back from Dubai in the Middle East, then we'll be ready to start with the live shows and have people call in and uh, go from there. But right now, I'm just trying to get enough of a backlog to tie this over until I can start doing this. All right. Um, tonight, I want to talk about some of the cases that I have done. In the first show, I explained how I do my work and that I am a hypnotherapist dealing with past life therapy. And I've been doing this now for 30 years, even though I started over 40 years ago. But I explained all of that. And the difference is, in my technique of past life therapy, past life regression, I have found a way to contact the subconscious mind and deal directly with the subconscious mind. And when I do that, we have amazing results in these cases. And that is really the secret, is contacting it and working directly with the subconscious mind. Now, I know in regular hypnosis, people are taught, they say they are communicating with the subconscious. They ask, the uh, well, the person is in trance, the hypnotist asks questions, this is part of the testing process, which I don't like to do the test. But when the person is in trance, they will ask the person to raise one finger for yes, another finger for no. And they just ask the questions and watch the responses of the hand movements. This is one way that the hypnotists are taught to speak to the subconscious. To me, it's tedious. And it's time-consuming, and you're not going to find that much out because the only thing you're going to get answers to will be yes and no questions. Why not use a method where you can speak directly to the subconscious and it will talk back to you and give you the answers to everything? To me, this is the most remarkable part of the technique that I have developed is to be able to speak directly to it and it will explain the answers to the problems, and it can go about fixing them. To me, that is much more valuable than using just yes or no uh, um, signals. But when I say I talk directly to the subconscious, uh, I had a psychiatrist who took my class in London, and he said, do you mean the psychiatric uh, definition of the subconscious? And I said, no, it's not that. It is much, much bigger than that. The way I understand it, I could be wrong, but the psychiatric definition of the subconscious is more childlike. And I have encountered that on many occasions. And when you encounter the childlike part of the person, it can help, but not to the extent of the part that I speak to. This, I believe, is the part that a lot of hypnotists work with is this childlike subconscious when they're trying to help people with habits, stop smoking, lose weight. Most of the time, the person, the hypnotist will have a script that they will read from, and they will tell the person mostly uh, when they're in trance, things like, oh, you will not want to smoke, or you will not want to eat. They are more or less dictating to the person what they will or will not do, and hoping this will be accepted by the person's mind. Well, I have found this, it may work in some cases, but I've found it's a lot more difficult because that part of the mind is like a child, like a little kid. You go and tell a little kid you will not do this, you know what's going to happen. They're going to dig in their heels and they'll say, oh yeah, make me. And so it's a whole lot harder to work with that part of the mind. I have also found a way to stop habits with the technique that I use, and it is a lot more effective because I allow the subconscious to help with the decision-making of how the person can go about stopping the habits. 
I don't like to do the habits anymore. To me, it's kind of boring. I'd much rather be doing the time travel, going through time tunnels, as I call it, to the past and reliving history. That, to me, is the most exciting part of my work. I'd rather do that than do the habits. But if the person comes to me and one of the things they want is to lose weight or to stop smoking, I will put it into the session. But it's never my main focus because there's a whole lot more that we can find out and help the person with their life. But people say, how do you define the subconscious? Well, to me, it is much, much larger than we can ever imagine. You may want to call it the oversoul, the higher self, the higher consciousness. It is that t a type of a thing that is so large and so big that it has the answers to everything. When we reach that part of the mind, there is nothing we can't find out. It knows absolutely everything about the person. And uh, that is the part that I work with. I call it the subconscious, and it answers to that. So that is the term I use. But I know when I'm speaking to it, I'm speaking to a much larger part of the person. And when I reach that part, it is remarkable what it can do. And I know when I have reached that part, and it's part of my technique on how to do this, because it will always speak about the person in the third person. It won't be I or me answering the question. It will be he or she, a lot of times it'll say, well, finally, I'm getting a chance to talk. I've been trying to get through to him, and he won't listen to me. And that's, that part, it talks about you, and it'll say things that you would never say about yourself. At times, it can often be cruel because it is objective. It's like the objective observer standing back and watching everything that is happening. And it has your best interest in mind. It loves you and it wants to help and it gets very frustrated when it can't. But it can often be cruel because it'll say, you know, why can't they understand? They're harming their body. They're doing things they shouldn't. And it'll tell them exactly what will happen if they proceed down the path they're going, what will happen to their body. But the, this part of the mind is extremely powerful. It uh, takes care of all of the functions of the body. You don't have to tell yourself to breathe or your heart to beat. It takes care of everything going in on inside the body. This is why when people come to me with physical complaints, and I get lots and lots of those, as I said the first day, I've had done thousands and thousands of people and I found patterns that have set up in what I'm doing. But when they come for me with these physical uh, problems, we can find out by uh, contacting the subconscious directly why they are experiencing the problem, the physical problem, and then we can proceed to take it away. It is that simple. And also, the subconscious is like a gigantic computer. It has the records of everything that has ever happened to the person in this life and in all the lives they've ever lived. It uh, can just records it in the minutest detail. I often wonder what it does with all of these tiny, tiny details. Because in your daily life, you are bombarded by thousands and thousands of bits of information. They come from all around you. These are things you see, you hear, you smell, a taste, you feel. It's thousands and thousands of, of pieces of information are bombarding you constantly. And this is going into the subconscious mind and it is being recorded by the subconscious mind and accumulated. In one of my other um, talks I'll be giving as we go through all of these series, I'll be explaining why I found out what it is accumulating these things for. But you are constantly being bombarded by all of this information 
that the subconscious mind is collecting. You cannot be aware of it. It would overwhelm you. It would be way, way too much that your mind could not handle it, your conscious mind. So as you go through your daily life, you are focusing on what is important around you, the main things that you have to pay attention to in your daily life. That's what we focus our attention on. And the other bits and pieces of information are not being noticed. They're being recorded, but they're not being noticed by the average person. And a lot of these psychic abilities come from this, too, because we are being bombarded by this, but most people don't pick up on these things. Many times when I have the person in regression, and they'll be describing every little thing about the scene. They'll be describing the wallpapers, the designs on the rugs, the fabric on the furniture, et cetera, et cetera, because they are becoming aware of all the details. In those cases, I have to move them out of the scene and move them forward because those are not important to the story that we're trying to find. But this gives an example of how much detail the subconscious does accumulate. Now, one very important thing that I have found, people are not aware of the power of their own mind. You have the power to heal yourself. You can because you have power over your body. In one of the future shows, I'm going to bring on a doctor who was a medical doctor for 40 years, and he has now written a book that our company has published about the power of the mind and how we heal ourselves. And that will be focusing on that part. But... Another thing people don't realize is they make themselves sick. They create the illnesses for whatever reason. This doesn't mean they do this consciously. People would never come. They'd always say, well, I don't want to be sick. I didn't do this to myself. I don't mean they do this consciously. They create an illness or a problem like that, a physical problem for a definite reason but they are not aware of it consciously. In my work, we have to find out what's going on in their life that they would want to have this illness in their life because it can often go back to problems they're having in their present everyday life, but we're not aware of it. We go to the doctor, we get medicines, we get pills, we cover up the symptoms, but we don't get to the cause of what is really happening, what is really causing these problems in our life. Some of the things I'm going to say may sound very drastic and unbelievable, but I have found this in thousands and thousands of cases I've come to these conclusions, that every physical symptom, every ache, pain, or physical symptom in the body is the subconscious trying to give you a message. It's trying to get your attention. It's trying to tell you something. And if you don't pay attention, if you don't understand, and most of us don't understand what it's trying to tell us, then the illness or the problem gets worse because it's still trying to get our attention. Then eventually, if we still can't understand what it's trying to tell us, then the if problem will turn into a disease or something that is a lot more difficult to repair and to fix when it gets to that point. Now, the subconscious, when it speaks here in these sessions, it speaks directly to me, too, sometimes. So during the shows, I'll be saying they. When I refer to they, it is the subconscious. Because when they are speaking about the person in the third person, they will often use the word we. We do this and we say this. So I've learned to say they so that we can, I can identify with them. They have told me that if we can get to the person before they have an operation, there is a chance that we can can fix the problem and they won't have to have the operation. 
Now, this is drastic, and I know a lot of people are not going to believe it, but they said once something has been taken out, we can't put it back. But we can find the cause of the problem before they have the operation. In many cases, we can alleviate it. But uh, when I was speak speaking in England and I was going to give my class, they told me, don't use the word cure. That word is not allowed over there. We can't say that this technique will cure illnesses. But that is uh, exactly what it does. But I guess I might get a here, too, with the medical association if I say that. So I'm going to have to just leave it up to the people to make up their own mind especially when they start understanding how powerful their own mind is, that uh, they may be able to understand how they can control the things that are going on in their own life. Take charge. Take the power back to where we can live a good life without having to worry about illness. This is what I'm trying to get people to look at. Look at their own body and their physical problem in a different way. Um, but I have found many cases when people come to me, tell me they're having problems in different parts of their body. Uh, I can usually tell them what's going on in their present day life because the subconscious is very literal. It will affect different parts of the body the same way over and over again. It is very literal in what it's trying to tell you. But, you know, being humans, we don't know this. We don't pay attention to it. We don't understand it. To give some examples, uh, I have many people who, as they come in, you know, we do our interview and I ask about their lives, what's going on in their lives, about their family members. And then they have a list of questions, and usually we will get to if they have any physical problems that they want to explore while we're having this session. Many times they will tell me they have back problems, either in the, across the shoulders, have pains there, up and down the spine. It's very common to have uh, middle back and lower back problems. This is very common. I get a lot of people like this, and I know it's because of the hectic uh, lifestyle that we live in. But when the person tells me they have back problems, the first thing I will ask them, do you feel like you're carrying a heavy load in this life? And usually they'll say, well, yes, I didn't even think about that. They've got, you know, lots going on in their work, in their marriages, and it is affecting them. In their back. I've had many people like this. I even had an emergency room doctor that came to me and it was her problem. And whenever it came out under the session, it was being caused by a heavy load of pressure because she had thought, had the feeling she should be able to save everyone she works with, which is absolutely impossible. She was putting too much pressure on herself. I've had businessmen who've come to see me and they are definitely carrying too much of a load. They're putting too much on them with their work, with the responsibilities, and it starts affecting the parts of the back. So this is what I mean about it being literal. People come, many of them talk about having hip problems and pains going down the leg, especially on the right side down on the hip and down the leg into the foot. And this is happening more and more. And when I get people like that, I have found it usually means they have been offered a choice in their life. They can go in a different direction if they want to. But sometimes they're very, uh, not so much happy, but let's say they are uh Content wouldn't even be the right word, but their way of life is predictable and it's stable. They would rather stay with what they know than wander off into the unknown. So they may be being offered a new direction, a new way to go, maybe a new job, maybe some a marriage, who knows. But they're being offered another direction. They are holding back 
they are afraid to take the first step out in the new direction. This creates pains in the hip and the leg and the, the foot, especially on the right side. And that's what usually I can ask them, is there anything going on in your life right now that you feel you're being offered another direction and you're holding back? And usually that's what will come out is, oh, yes, you know, but they have not made the connection. But see what I mean about the subconscious being very literal in the message that it's trying to tell you. And once the message is delivered and they understand what it is, and we find this out during the session, once they find out what it is the subconscious is trying to tell them, the ailment goes away. And sometimes it's miraculous the way it goes away so suddenly. Because why try to keep giving a message when it's already been delivered and understood? I have people who are then uh, stomach problems, and it'll boil down to something's going on in their life they cannot stomach. See here again, the subconscious is very literal. People with problems, uh, aches and pains in their hand and wrist, I've had, i found out sometimes they're holding on to something that they don't need in their life anymore. And they should release it and let it go. So some of these things, these people have never thought about this before. It's a whole new concept because why would somebody make themselves sick? Now there are some people who even though they discover these things, they really don't want to be well. They don't want to be cured. They don't want to be healed. And I'm sure a lot of you know of these kind of people. You probably have them in your own life. Some people, their illness, their problem, their ailment is all they have. They don't have anything else. Sometimes this is what gives them attention, makes you feel sorry for them makes them special if you have someone paying attention. In a case like that, you see why they have created the ailment. But in a case like that, if they were to remove the ailment, they wouldn't have anything. So in those cases, they will cling to it, even though it is not in their best good, and they just keep getting sicker. So we can't help everyone. In my work with the the books on Jesus, when I'll be thinking about that too in the weeks to come, on the missing years of Jesus and the parts of his life that no one knows about, I found that even Jesus couldn't heal everyone because he could look at them and see if it was part of their karma to be healed or not. In a case like that, you cannot interfere with a person's karma, and he knew this. He couldn't take it away. The most he could do in those cases was to help alleviate pain. So when I've had cases that I can't help, I always remember that even Jesus couldn't heal everyone. But we do the best we can. We try the best we can. A lot of physical problems are caused by stress. and The doctors are finally really realizing this heart problems, uh, blood pressure, are caused by the stress in the person's life. And once they learn to calm down, meditation is wonderful. I highly recommend people to learn meditation because it's so good at calming the body down. We're living in such hectic times right now. But a lot of the cancer cases I've found is caused by stress and also by suppressed anger. Sometimes people have, are angry at something in their life. They can't talk to anyone. They can't express their feelings. They hold it inside. It'd be really good if they could talk to someone, but sometimes they don't, they feel they can't. Some men feel macho that they can't e express their feelings to anyone. You know, you know the type. And they hold this inside their body. Well, they're holding this suppressed anger, these suppressed emotions. It begins to churn around inside the body, especially in the intestinal area. 
And as it does this, holding this suppressed anger, eventually it can turn into cancer because it has no release and it eventually begins to eat away at the organs. And here again, I know some people are going to say they don't believe these things I'm saying, but this is what I have discovered, and as a reporter and investigator, I just report what I have found. Maybe people can take this and use it. I hope they can. But karma is very important in this also, because you build up karma with people. We carry around so much baggage and garbage, a lot of people do. They hang on to things that should be let go a long time ago, things that we don't need to carry around with us, uh, resentment, hate, anger towards someone else. It's not hurting them as much as it's hurting yourself. There was one man that I had come to me who had cancer in all different parts of his body. As soon as the doctors could fix it in one part, make it go away, it would come up at another part of his body. And it just kept moving from part to part. So I asked him, what about your personal life? Is there anything going on in there that you have anger with? He says, oh, yes, my, my ex-wife. He said, I hate her. He said, she has the children, I can't see them, and I absolutely hate her. Can you see what he was doing? He was holding all of this inside. And I told him, according to what I have found, he wasn't going to get well until he released these feelings. He had to let it go, let it go. And, you know, of course, that means forgiveness. He had to forgive the first wife and let it go and not hold on to this and want to, uh, to, you know, to have the anger there. And I told him this, you're going to have to let it go. You're going to have to forgive her. He said, I can't. You don't know what she has done to me. That if I do that, then she has won. Said, well, she will win if you die. So you see, holding on to these emotions, we think we're getting back at the other person. We're actually hurting ourselves. And it does begin to eat on the inside, and it will cause problems. This is part of the old the, the garbage in the baggage that we carry around, and we don't need to this. We're hurting ourselves more than we're hurting the other person. This is part of what it's all about. We have to let go of the karma. We have to try to work out all of the old karma and try not to make any more. Otherwise, you're going to have to come back and do it again with the same person all over again. You don't get out of it until you have worked it out. Earth is a school, and you are taking classes. You are going through grades in this school. In this class, in this school, you can't, uh, can't skip grades, but you can fail and have to take the same grade over again. You don't get to go on to the next lesson, the next class, until you have learned the one you are in, because that's all it is, is a series of lessons. And, uh, you have to learn this one before you go on to the next one, and which may or may not be better. You don't know. One time I asked them, I said, wouldn't it be better if we knew why these things are happening, if we knew the karma we had with the other person? Wouldn't that make it easier when we come into this life? They said, it wouldn't be a test if you knew the answers. So that's part of it. We have to go into this not knowing why these things are happening. I see sometimes when I do the regressions, patterns have been set up. The person will be going through many, many lifetimes with the same person. They come back again and again, still trying to work it out. 
And when I do my talk later on up in this series about life after death, when you die and you're coming back into a life again, you will meet with certain people that you have uh, developed karma with, and you will try to work out the karma with these people. You have to. It goes around, comes around. You don't get out of it. And on the other side, you're talking to this person, and you'll say, well, we didn't do so good last time, did we? Let's go back and do it again. This time, you be the husband, be the wife. We can reverse the roles. Maybe we can work it out that way because you have to work it out. And sometimes it's not just one past life creating the problem. It can be a whole series of them. You've gotten into a rut with the same person, and you're just not making any headway in, in trying to work out the karma. Well, if you're coming back this time and you're still not able to work it out, it's just still a problem. It is not going anywhere. It's going in circles. So there's a lot of people talk about a father or a mother in their life that there's no way they will ever please them. They will never be able to work it out. In a case like that, I tell them to do it mentally. You can't do this consciously because the other person doesn't have any idea what you're talking about. Mentally, contact the other person and say, it's not going to work. We've tried so many times. Let's just tear up the contract. Because when you come into the life, you do sign a contract with these people. Say, let's just tear up the contract. You go your way, and I'll go mine, and we'll work it out a different way. We tried. We really tried, but it's just not going to work. Why keep going over and over something that is not going to work? In that case, just release them, cut them loose, and let them go. And m mentally just say, you go your way with love and try to work out your problems in a different way. I'll go my way. We've tried. We can't do it. So let's just forget about it and go on with some other lessons. And you'd be surprised once you do that, the other person can't affect you like they did. I like to say they can't push your buttons anymore. It's no fun to them anymore. It's a game, really, that they're playing a lot of times just to push your buttons and get you angry. Once you release them and let them go, it doesn't affect you the same way anymore. And you, they can't push your buttons. And many people are very surprised at this, on how it can happen. And some people have said, yes, but the person who I'm having the trouble with has died. They've already gone on, and we never had a chance to reconcile our problem. You can still do it by mentally contacting that person's spirit on the other side. They can still have contact with you, and you can do it the same way. Just say, we tried, and we're not going to be able to do it, so I release you from the contract. You go on and find the best way you can over there to work out your own problems and to go in your own direction, and I'll go in mine. You'd be surprised once you do this, the peace of mind, that you will have afterwards because you have released them. They say, what is the quickest but not necessarily the easiest way to work out karma and get rid of karma? The quickest but not the easiest way is to forgive the person. You have to put them. And that's very difficult, but you have to forgive them and let them go. Then you don't have any more karma with that person, and they can't hurt you anymore. They can't affect your life. Because a lot of the people that come to me, it's not physical problems, it's karmic problems with their family. They want to know, why did I come into this family? Why did I end up in this kind of a situation? I've heard horror stories you wouldn't believe of the way 
people have been raised, with the way they were treated as a child. And I often wonder how that person ever turns into a functioning adult with the way they were brought up. But to their credit, they have. They have overcome all of these things and turned into a functioning adult that is a credit to society. In those cases, you might think, well, maybe it was a test that was set up. Maybe it was something happened in another life that they are repaying by having to go through these things. Because often the subconscious will say they had to learn some things. This was the only way they could learn it. And before you come into a life, you are shown a glimpse of what your life is going to be. And you agree to live this life. And your guides and guardian angels will say, you know, this is not going to be an easy one. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. But by going into this, you will repay a lot of karma. You will get rid of a lot of this junk, this garbage and this baggage you've been carrying around for many, many lives. And usually the person agrees to it, that this, all right, I'll try this. So remember that. You wrote the script. You decided on what it was you wanted to work out when you came into this life. Now, hopefully you have gone through the worst of it as a child, maybe with parents that presented problems, but you chose those parents for a reason. I've even found people who were adopted. They picked the parents who were their biological parents for the biological characteristics of the body. But also, when they get this preview of the life, they are also shown the person who will eventually adopt them. So most of this we try to work out before we come back. But you know the best laid plans of mice and men don't often turn out the way we want them to. This is because this is a planet of free will. You come in with your nice little plan, all wrapped up in a package like a Christmas present with a nice bow on top saying, this is what I want to do, I'll get it all worked out this time around. But, because it is a planet of free will, all the other participants in this huge scenario, this play, this theatrical play, this game that we're in, they all come in with their own little plans of what they want to accomplish with all wrapped up like a pretty package. And when they get here, everything collides. And often, it doesn't work out the way we intend it to. I've taken people through the death experience and they'll say, but I had it all planned, I had it all figured out. What happened? Life happened. Life gets in the way. There's emotions. There's love, anger, jealousy, all these things we have to deal with. And we work it out the best way we can. And if our plan doesn't work, we take the alternative route. We do the best we can. That's all we can be expected to do. If you can't do it all this time, you can do it the next time around. But these things are very important for us to know about, that we have control over our life once we understand these things, to a certain extent, I guess you would say. But the mind is powerful enough that it can create illnesses and it can also cure them and take them away. Once we find out why the person has these illnesses and what it's trying to show the person. I'll, I'll give a few more examples. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do as much as I thought, so maybe in the next show I can continue with some more of these cases that will illustrate what I'm trying to talk about. But I had one young man who came to me. He was a college student. He was much older than the other ones in his class because he had never been able to complete the classes. He was under stress all the time. And when he was in the classes taking the uh, courses, he would often pass out. And he would, during this time, he would have so much stress that he couldn't even eat. 
He would be constantly throwing up. He had intestinal problems. And it was very difficult for him. And so he would go to the classes stressed out with no food, his upset stomachs, and often he would pass out in class. So this went on for two or three years where he just was not getting anywhere with his classes in the college because he couldn't complete them. He couldn't even make a headway. And we were trying to find out what was causing this. So when we I put him under, we found a pattern. He had about five different lives where he died with injury to that part of his body, his intestinal area. As he had set up a pattern, he was in a rut of repeating the same kind of thing. Had like five different lifetimes. Once bayoneted, uh, run over by carriage, fell off a cliff. It was all to injury to that part of his body. So that became a very sensitive part of his body. So in this life, when he was under any kind of stress, it would react in that part of his body and cause problems. And then while I had him under, another strange thing came out that connected to this life. The subconscious was talking about this and telling us what was what was wrong, and it said, I hear the mother. I hear the mother saying, you make me sick. You make me want to throw up. Now, there was the key. He had had the pattern in the other life. He was in the rut, and he brought it forward into this life, and it was reemphasized by the mother having those feelings toward the baby and the little child. So he grew up with this uh, inferiority feeling, I guess you would say, and the feeling of stress, and it's centered in that part of the body. And it just followed a pattern into this life. And his subconscious did say, even recognizing the pattern, it would help if he could forgive the mother and release her, then we could get rid of everything. So that was what we worked on at the rest of the session was to get him to forgive his mother and to release her because he'd had a lot of problems with her that he hadn't even told me about. And then right before we were going to come out of the session, the subconscious said, oh, he's going to be all right now. He feels hungry. And when he woke up, he said, you know, I want to eat. And it was the first time in days that he had really felt like eating something and being able to keep it down. But see what I mean? We have to go into the past lives to find out some of these causes, but sometimes it relates to this life. It can be many different reasons for these different uh, problems. Uh, a common complaint that I get are um, headaches, especially migraine headaches. I have lots of people coming to me with migraine headaches. This seems to be a common ailment, I guess, a lot in our stressful world, too. Migraines can be helped very easily because many of them also follow a pattern of different kinds of lives. Some of them would be easy to understand. Uh, blows to the head in another lifetime, uh, animal attacks, you know, by, it's not a different thing. Injuries to the head can cause these things. I had one, um, man who went back to a lifetime where he was shot in the head in the Civil War. And there was another woman I had in England who had had pains. It was a different kind of a headache. It started at the, the bridge of her nose and went all the way across the top of her head in a line. And it was excruciating pain, and no medicine, nothing could help with it. It was just there almost all the time. Very rare for her to have any reprieve from this pain. The pain went from the bridge of the nose upward across the top of the head. And the minute I heard her describing it, I had a feeling what it was going to be. And some of you who are, know about these things will probably be able to understand what I mean. 
in the past life, she was killed by, in a war, with the soldiers. They were out there doing their man playing and fighting each other. And she was killed by a sword blade coming down right on the top of her head. And that was what I, I thought the pain sounded like. So she died that way with the sword hitting her across the top of the head. And once we find out these things, then it goes away. Because it's trying to tell her something. All of these are trying to tell you something in this life. Like, don't make the same mistakes you made in the other lifetime. And we, in the session, we try to find out, what are you trying to tell her? What did she do in the other life that she, you don't want her to repeat in this lifetime? But I had one with a migraine that was uh, different. It was unusual. Uh, it took place in this lifetime. The woman was a travel agent. And because she was a travel agent, she could travel anywhere she wanted to. So she took a trip to Indonesia. And it was a wonderful trip. There was nothing traumatic. There was nothing unhappy about it at all. It was a perfect trip. She got there, and it was a beautiful place, and she had a wonderful vacation. So when she got ready to leave and got on the plane to come home, she started this terrible headache. And that continued. It just kept on, about every day, she would have these headaches, and the doctors couldn't help her with it. So when we went back in the past life to find out what was causing these migraines, what came out was that in another life, this woman had lived in Indonesia and way back in the past, and she'd had a very happy life. She was with a man that she loved very much, a happy family. Everything about it was very good. And going back to that part of the world triggered that happy memory. And when she left, it was as though it was all being taken away from her again. The, the husband, the home, everything that she had been so happy with being taken away from her again, and this created the headache. Now, you know, consciously she didn't know any of this, because it had made a subconscious connection to that place. And the the homesickness, the longing came back into her life again. And, uh, of course, it didn't make any sense. Well, then I had to talk to her while she was under, explain that all of this happened a long time ago. And even if she was to go back to that part of the world and live, it wouldn't be the same because the people weren't there. They had already gone on to other lives. Some of these people may be reincarnated in their her life today, and she may have contact with them. But there would be no way she could recreate the circumstances that she had lived under over there. Be happy like that. So it would do no good to even try. So we had to put it in its place in the past and leave it there. I always tell them it's from the past. We leave it in the past and we don't only bring it forward for the information. And then we can take away these things. So once she discovered this and we reasoned with the subconscious, this is the childlike part that wants to do these things, reasoned with it and told it, that all belonged to another body in another time and another place. It had nothing to do with the body now. Once we had done that, it was all, it all worked out all right. The same thing has happened with uh, people who've come to me who have wanted to have children, and they've had a series of uh, miscarriages. Or sometimes they can't get pregnant at all, but they mostly have miscarriages. And the doctors say there's nothing wrong with them. There's no reason why they can't have a healthy baby. And then when we go back, we find out sometimes the person died in another life in childbirth. And this, this part of the subconscious is trying to protect the person. It reasons that if the person died because they had died having a baby, well, then the answer is to not allow them to get pregnant again. 
it's a strange kind of logic, but that is the way that part of the subconscious uh, sees these things. Just don't let her get pregnant again. So then I have to argue with it and to try to have it understand it was the other body in the other life that had the physical problem. The body she is in now in this life is healthy and it can have a baby with no problems, no physical problems, and it would be it it'd be easier to work it out like that. I have to talk to it that way. This body is healthy, it's a good body, and so we don't have to have those kind of problems. And once it understands that, it's like, oh, okay. And the person, I've had many of them write me, they've gotten pregnant within a few months or so afterwards because the subconscious finally figures it out. Then a lot of these things go back to the other lives and the way the person died in the other lives. And this comes up time and time again in my work. Um, but yeah, there's many more of these. I don't think I'm going to have enough time of what we have time we have left to go into some of the more detailed uh, past lives. I'll probably do it in the next show because when I come back from my trip, I want to go live and then we can discuss different parts of my book because I think that's what I'll do the next. Uh, show I will go into some more of these cases to show how we're identifying with past lives and we don't even realize it because we're so caught up in this world and naturally the doctors aren't going to understand what is causing the problem. They just see it as a physical problem, not related to past lives at all or to conditions in this life that are causing stress. They don't understand that. They don't see it that way because this is not the way they're taught. But now that I'm training people all over the world, they're beginning to see the mind is much more powerful than they could have ever believed. And I think we're going to see a lot of changes. A lot of things are going to begin to happen that have not happened before. And in my future shows... I will be going into the other books that I've written about. Uh, I wrote three volumes about the uh, prophecies of Nostradamus. It is the most exact and accurate interpretation of the prophecies of Nostradamus that have ever been written because it resulted from a direct contact with Nostradamus while he was alive, living in his time period in France. This is not talking to a dead spirit. This is talking to him while he is alive in France, writing the prophecy. It is time travel. And this is one of the things we will be going into. And I want to do that in a live audience so you can ask questions. It may take several shows because there's a great deal of material. And I have lectured on these, these things all over the world. I've also written two books about the missing years of Jesus, the stories that are not in the Bible. There is a lot of information that is beautiful and wonderful about his life that I think should have been included. I'll be talking, talking about that also. I have another book that I've written about life after death, and that one we will talk we'll into what is it like when you die? What does it feel like? Where? What does the body feel like? And then we will go into where you go on the other side. There are several places you can go. And this is a very beautiful book. It's a very beautiful story. So I'd rather do that with a live audience also. And I've written... Uh, four books now about my experiences with the UFO abductions and uh, ETs. And people said that mine, I have hit, touched on theories that no other investigator has found. And my work is positive. You will never hear negativity from any of my shows because I have not found it. I have not discovered any negative in these things. I have found positive, 
and I have found the reasons why these things are happening, and it is not at all the way some of the other investigators have um, thought it, it is. So we'll be covering a lot of those. We can do several shows on the things I discovered there. And then my latest books go into mind-bending concepts. These are the convoluted universe series. I say they are for those people who want their minds bent like pretzels. The ones who want to think. My books are intended to make you think. And those we probably take several shows to go into all the uh, strange concepts I've come up with. So I think I'll stop this show there today, and we will continue next the next one with some more of these uh, unusual cases that I've found before I leave for uh, Dubai. All right, if anyone is interested in finding out more about the books, my 800 number is 1-800-935-0045, 1-800-935-0045, or you can check on our website. The name of my company is Ozark Mountain Publishing, so the uh, the, uh, website is an abbreviation. O Z A R K M T dot com. The abbreviation for mountain. O Z A R K M T dot com. You can also contact this website or my personal email is D E Cannon. C A N N O N. D E Cannon at msn.com. You can contact me there if you are interested in private sessions or if you're interested in taking my hypnosis classes. We can give you information about all of these things by contacting them. All right, and that's, that's all for tonight, and we will continue next week, same time. If you enjoyed the show, Check out more of our other videos, and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.